There are some drivers in NASCAR who have been synonymous with a number, a manufacturer, or a team. Matt Kenseth was synonymous with all three aspects. The number 17, Ford, and Roush. Over his career, he quietly was a perennial championship contender, year in and year out. All of which were coming together in 2012. Which is why it was baffling at the time to the outside viewer and the insider to see that he had announced that he was leaving Roush at the end of the year, especially since he had the points lead at the time of the announcement. And while he ran well through the 2012 season, 2013 looked to be a huge opportunity for Kenseth as he would join Joe Gibbs Racing to drive the number 20 Toyota Camry. While Danica Patrick was the main story going into the Daytona 500 in 2013, it was Kenseth who proved more deserving of the fanfare as he led 86 of the opening 149 laps. Unfortunately, the good fortune was not meant to last. Heartbreak for Matt Kenseth. What a dominant car, and to have something go wrong. That's Daytona, buddy. This is just a gear or something. It's uh, shaking in the shifter real bad. It's a gear transmission or something. That was Matt Kenseth, big vibration on Toyota number 20. But his two Joe Gibbs teammates are now 1-2. Denny Hamlet and Kyle Busch has worked his way back to the front. They raised the hood. A lot of smoke come out from underneath that Matt Kenseth 20 car. Disappointment would come in the form of a smoky 37th place finish. Two races later, though, the disappointment would dissipate. Carl Edwards has taken fifth from Jimmy Johnson, as here we go on the last lap. Three cars ahead, the first of which is Casey Mears. And they'll hey, catch me before the start finishes. Down, down, down. I, I got him, man. I got him, buddy. Bring it to the line here. Clear by three. Can you believe you're driving, holding off Casey yeah, three, Kane, back. and you're telling the spotter what you need? Kane looks to the, to the inside. Light the candles. Happy birthday, Matt, Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth's first win at JGR would also come on his birthday, starting what would become a beautiful relationship. Over the following weeks, Kenseth would continue to have middling runs that barely kept him in the top 10 in points. But once again, after winning the pole at Kansas, Kenseth would once again duel Casey Kane for the win. The next car before this one's over, Kane has the bottom, sweeps up out of turn number four. White flag. White flag. In the air. One more lap. It is not over yet, though, boys. McMurray may not be a factor. He's probably far enough ahead as they roll turn number two. Okay, Larry, what happened that time is, is, is Matt moved up the hill, got a nice run off of turn two, opened up the, the distance between he and Kane. I think he can hold him off from here. That's Tony Stewart who pulls down to the inside, out of the way, not wanting to affect the outcome of this one. Kane coming on the bottom, sweeps up high. He's got a chance to dive down low. But Matt Kenzer, that's the third straight driver to win a Sprint Cup race from the pole. It would seem like the ship was corrected. Kenseth, with the win, was looking nearly locked into the 2013 chase for the Sprint Cup. But that was quickly buried by a 50-point penalty. When adjusted amongst other point systems, it was one of the largest penalties in NASCAR history. Luckily for the team, it was reduced to only 15 points following JGR's appeal, though. Over the next two weeks, Kenseth led 282 combined laps at Richmond and Talladega, but failed to bring home another win. Instead, the next win came with a lucky break at Darlington. Got that big runoff turn four up on the high side. Kenseth looking in one, a lapped car ahead. Will it be a factor? Had to let no. him go, had to let him go. Can and he Kenseth is the new leader. Can I get him back, can I get him back? Tried to cross over move down the back stretch. Now we'll see who gets the jump off four. And oh. that's been Kyle's Achilles heel these last 10 laps. Yep. It's Kenseth. Clear sailing for our leader. He is just up here in a long gone cruising to victory. And Gordon has backed off a bit for Hamlin who catches the traffic. Yeah, I think Gordon really tried real hard in uh, turns one and two and lost a lot of time. Don't think he's going to be able to get Denny Hamlin in the 11. Out of turn four from Wisconsin, Matt Kenseth scores his 27th Sprint Cup Series win. Even with three wins, Kenseth still remained insanely inconsistent as he only scored one top 10 in the next five races, only to once again 
hit the top again with his fourth win of the season. Came out of the gate strong. Got their first win together at Las Vegas. And he's in line now for his first win in the bluegrass. Going to be his fourth victory of the year. The checkered flag is out, and it's being displayed for Matt Kenseth. He's a winner today at Kentucky. I don't even know what to say, guys. So, thank you, guys. While Kenseth was starting to level out with a top five and two top tens in the next six races, he also finished below 20th three times. Once again, though, as the chase grew closer, Kenseth was locked again in another duel with Casey Kane for the win. Kenseth and Kane, who wins it? He's there. Can he get to him? Final the corner. Here's the bump. No, he missed it. Matt Kenseth is going to hang on and win the night race at Bristol. His fifth win of the season offered him up a three-point lead over Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch to start the chase. And with that lead, Kenza took off running. Tonight, he'll wind up leading the most laps, and in an effort to start his championship off, will collect maximum points at Chicagoland. Checkered flag and the Geico 400 to Mr. Matt Kenseth from Wisconsin. That didn't use that line that time. One more set of corners. He tried. He Not going to be enough. Matt Kenseth is going to open the chase with two straight wins. Checkered flag at New Hampshire to Kenseth and Joe Gibbs Racing. Kenseth built up a 14-point gap over Kyle Busch, which seemed to be a good amount of points to be ahead, until you realize that five-time champion Jimmy Johnson was lurking in the weeds. Allison, Jimmy was tied with him for most wins at Dover. Now the record is his alone. Jimmy Johnson dominates the Monster Mile and wins the third race in the chase. Johnson's win cut the lead down to eight. At Kansas, Kenseth once again was a front runner, but with the speeding penalty late in the race, he would be mired back in the pack. He would scrape and claw and get his way back up to 11th, but Jimmy Johnson finished sixth. The points lead was shaved down to three. With a third place at Charlotte, he gained one point more of an advantage on the 48. So, with five races left, he had a four-point gap. The only problem being that Talladega was next on the chopping block. Kenseth ran as he did in the spring at Dega, up front. Throughout the day, Kenseth was one of the three drivers to dominate the race. Along with Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr., his strong car led the field. But, much like earlier in chase races, Kenseth's car went away as the day went on his poor handling car pushing him further and further back in the pack. He would come home in 20th, giving up his lead to Jimmy Johnson. But the next week, Kenseth looked to make up the gap in the best possible way he could, by going for the win. Unfortunately, Jeff Gordon would outduel him, and he would have to come home second, leaving Martinsville in a tie with Jimmy Johnson for the championship. But the two weeks following would be the turning point of the chase. Matt Kenseth is going to finish fourth. Jimmy Johnson is going to lead 255 of 334 laps. Outstanding indeed. The winner at Texas, Jimmy Johnson. Johnson's win separated the two by seven points. Still, they were near a deadlock going into Phoenix. For most of the day, Johnson had a front-running car while Kenseth peaked at 10th place. And towards the end of the race... Kenseth's car continued to ail as he limped home to a 23rd place finish. Johnson, on the other hand, would finish 20 spots higher. So, heading into Homestead, the gap was 28 points. It would take a miracle for Kenseth to even contend for the championship. Kenseth would start off in the pole and lead a majority of the race, but with a late restart with 74 to go, the field was scrambled. Well, wow, a big scramble! Johnson's in the middle of it, in the middle of that. In and out, hold your line. What kind of damage might he have gotten in that? Could be a flat tire. Little smoke showing there. Is it from the 48? Yeah, he's got some damage on the left front fender. Get my left front fender, please. Even with damage, Johnson would climb back up to ninth by the end of it all. 
Kenseth could only watch as his teammate Denny Hamlin won the race. 19 points was the difference. In 2013, Kenseth would set career highs in most wins in a season with 7, and most laps led in a season with 1,783. But it wasn't enough to beat Jimmy Johnson. Looking back at his 2013 season, one has to wonder, what if Kenseth's team had shown up at Phoenix? What if his car hadn't gone away from him at Talladega? What if, in 2013, Matt Kenseth captured his missing ring?